What's up, guys? Brian Wilson here with Fort Sill Martial Arts, Russville, Arkansas. I'm going to sort of review, share my experience from a recent seminar I just did um, with Bruno Bostic. So, sort of a training blog of documenting that. Uh, I recently put together a, a playlist on our YouTube uh, from that seminar of just the techniques he showed. We came back and are still working. We're still working them in the gym. And just this morning, I was kind of wrapped up a private lesson a few minutes ago, and we were doing something totally unrelated to that seminar. And I kind of applied the concept from one of the techniques, a sweep that he showed from half guard, uh, to a different sweep in sort of a leg entanglement idea. But it's just fascinating, you know, that's just how, that's how it works. You should be drawing larger principles from some ideas and, uh, you know, applying them to several techniques, not just, oh, this one technique, this is, this is the only time it works, okay? So, a little background, I've always known about Bruno Bastios, but I've never got a chance to train with him. Um, I'm not even sure that I was ever, like, at any seminars or anything where he was at. I got trained with a lot of guys that he sort of came up with. Uh, for example, Hobson Mora, uh, Feijon, Rodrigo Feijon, Feijal, um, however you want to pronounce that. We like to call him Beans. Uh, Feijal had a black belt named Daniel Garcia. Uh, that we trained a lot with extensively, sort of. Uh, I remember a lot of things that Daniel had showed Bruno was hitting on those same points, right? And some other people uh, that sort of are in that circle would be like Vitor Shaolin Ribeiro or Gustavo Dantes. Um, just old school, well, I guess you could say like folk, first generation Dovu and Yao guys from. Uh, that sort of had populated uh, the United States. Uh, so like 2009, 2010 is one of the first times I trained with Hobson. That is when I first started being aware of Bruno, probably about Blue Belt. And at that time, he was sort of, I would say like, for lack of a better way of putting it, but maybe a correct assertion, like legendary status. Like he had tons of accolades, he was a fierce competitor, uh, and he had had a long history of competition, okay? Fast forward, he's still competing now, right? So this is 10 years later, uh, and he's, he competes in the super heavyweight division, right? Say a couple of things about him. He's got two wins over Tom DeBlass, one recently. I can't remember how long the other one was. I think it was a couple of years ago. But he just has a very interesting style. He weighs about 250 pounds, and but, you know, at that weight class, people might not even weigh in. So, he has a unique strategy of how he would choose to grapple against people that might weigh 330, 350 pounds, or might outweigh him 75 to 100 pounds, right? So, that was interesting. Like, okay, how does, like, what moves does this guy show on somebody that is way bigger than but he's also big, so that's a, it's an interesting thing. I think um, the point I was looking at it from is like a reverse engineering perspective, like, okay, so Bruno, he does these techniques to people bigger than him, so if he's a heavyweight, super heavyweight, doing these to other super heavyweights, well, that would mean that maybe like my wife Cora, you know, she's, she's a lighter weight, she's shorter than I am, that, that should mean that, you know, she should be able to do some of these techniques to people bigger than her, and so on, and other students that might be, you know, 125 pounds rolling against me, whatever it is, so it's like, okay, that's interesting, You're, you know, you have a unique way of viewing this jiu-jitsu in relation to one of the most common things that people bring up, size, okay, so that was something that um, initially I was excited about training with them over. And <clears throat> when we got there to the seminar, get going, it was, uh, you know, pretty, pretty big seminar, a lot of people there. And I liked how he started off, okay? So, so he started off and he's like, hey guys, you know, like, gave a little bit of background on himself, kind of stuff I just said, like, hey, here's stuff, you know, that I'm gonna be teaching you and, and here's how it works. 
he talked uh, not at the beginning but later on in the seminar about like the importance of butterfly guard talking about how when he came up with some of those people like at, at that time the butterfly guard was sort of the just sort of like the the thing to know and be aware of and he was kind of, kind of saying that it, it sort of passed out of the immediate consciousness of jujitsu right like it's not the most popular thing and I remember Butterfly being such a big emphasis, uh, point of emphasis for a lot of those people I mentioned, whether I trained with them or watched the videos or whatever, those, those cast and crew of players we talked about earlier. But Bruno, um, he started off kind of discussing theory. We did half guard. So he sort of addressed everybody, introduced himself, a little bit of his accolades. Um, he's a sixth six-time world champion, fourth-degree black belt, if I'm not mistaken, I think that was the, and then a list of other credentials. I mean, he's just, it's a storied competitor. He's got all of this, all of this momentum behind him, right? And he said, he's like, okay, you know, we're going to do the half guard, and here's some strategy when you're playing half guard. You know, you don't ever want to let him do this or that, and, you know, they if they get this far side underhook, and you're not able to get an underhook, not a big deal. So he, he kind of like went over some real basics of strategy. Like, hey, you're in this position, you're on your side. Here's some things that are going to happen, and here's some things you don't want to happen. So be sure you don't let this or this happen. Okay. So he kind of had this sort of theoretical discussion of the position, and it's like, okay, under those conditions, we will fit these techniques. Right? And so he showed a sweep based off of like one of the theories he was talking about and he showed the sweep a couple of times and kept kind of elaborating on the details of the sweep and the theories and then he's like okay guys does anybody have any questions uh yes yes Bruno yes sir professor I have a question um could you clarify that one it's whatever this person had a question like one time one technique somebody had two questions at that point he did this on every technique Oh, yes, it's very common. Yeah, let's look at that, right? Any other questions? Let's say somebody else has a question. Okay, good, good, good. And he's showing the techniques. So let's say he showed it a time or two, then he showed it another time or two, and then he's talked a lot. So instead of being like, all right, guys, let's go work on that, he's like, okay, let me show it a couple more times. So he'd show it, he'd show it, and then, okay, guys, does that make sense? Are we good, are we good to work on that? I'm, he might even show it one more time, but... I really liked how there was a lot of talking, there was a lot of theoretical explanation, discussion on the front end. There was somebody has a problem in the audience. Who is it? What do you have a problem with? How can I help you with it? Oh, this is your problem. That's a very common problem. I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, you know, here's how you deal with that. Oh, we got another problem. Oh, you, you thought of that in relation to what she said. Okay. And it's just like, and there's all this talking and some showing the mood. But then it wasn't, it's like he just like turned us out to work. He showed the move more times after all the talk. Then we worked and we drilled each move for a long time. This is a three hour seminar. I think he showed four, maybe five moves. Um, he showed kind of um, a situation that he tacked two or three things onto the end, but it was all, it was all on the same wheelhouse and it was all fundamental and it was all, I mean, just jujitsu for everyone. It's a diverse group of people there. It's, black belts to white belts there's young people to old people male and female and so on right and everybody was able to benefit i like this i don't think that i don't think jujitsu for everyone is is sort of a statement that i mean it has some holes in it right but i think that that what that means is that there are approaches methods techniques strategies that are for all people and like when I study with high level people like Bruno Bastios, Justin Raider, uh, you know, even like my coach Danny Dream, like anybody that I perceive like, man, they are, they're sort of in, on an enlightened level. It's like when you hear him talk about it, it's just like, oh man, it speaks to you. And I definitely, I mean, it's definitely something I took away from the Bruno seminar. Like, that, like, like when he was talking, I was listening I was thinking, I'm like, man, these are techniques that work for everybody. I'm going to go back to gym. I'm going to show this to my, my smaller white belts. I'm going to show this to, uh, you know, I'm going to show this to my heavyweight. And so, 
right? Because it just a, it was a, it's sort of an inclusive approach, and I really like that. Um, and like again, so he just really he took the time, and then maybe say the last 25, 30 minutes, I was covered from a, I had a, a injury on my ankle. I did not roll. I really wanted to roll with him. I was sad that I didn't. I just had to keep my ankle covered up and stuff. But got to watch him roll. He saved like the last 30 minutes of seminar to roll so smooth. Watching him roll was just like, and he is such a nice guy. Like I told him, I was like, man, I've always been a fan of yours. I've always wanted to train with you. Uh, thanks for coming and doing this. This is awesome. I met you in 2015. I beat you Jeff Houston when I was getting my t-shirt and I shook your hand and I told you the same stuff. And um, also, you beat Tom to blast, and that's really cool, man. Okay, yeah, I fangirled a little bit, fanboyed, whatever it is. And it was just, it was a good event. And guys, <clears throat> I'm doing these training vlogs. I'm trying to loop back and kind of refresh on notes. And I want to do one of these over sort of every high-level coach that I trained with over the years that sort of got me here and made me think the way I think was. Greg Jackson, Michael Lee John, whoever it is, I can just chart for you the seminars and events that made such a notable difference in my trajectory as a martial artist, right? And I encourage people to do that. I'm always the one that brings people into my academy for my students and for myself and my instructors. But don't be one of those practitioners that's too cool for school, too cool to go train with. Uh, somebody it's like if you can afford a seminar private lesson team event make the investment like it is literally how I got here you know and that's not for everybody but it's like if you want to be the best martial artist you can be it involves putting in the time right I saw a thing yesterday it's like you know you're not paying me per hour you're paying me for all the time I put in over the last 13 years and all those people I trained Right? You're not paying for class. This is to me, unrelated to martial arts or anything, but it's kind of talking about trades workers. It's like, hey, this person's put in 10 years of super intense study. You're paying them for their lost time. Right? That's like, and, and here's the thing if you do a passion, and I'm always talking about this, do a passion, there is no lost time. Right? I, I view everything I've done to get to this point as a, as a totally worth it investment. Right? So thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you made it to the end, we've got a, oh, we've got a seminar coming up July 27th, Stephen Gorley. Going to be an hour and a half jiu-jitsu seminar covering some half guard, bottom and top. And then after that, we're going to do, it's from 12 to 1.30. It's here at the gym. And after that, we're going to do a judo workshop. It's going to be kind of a fast-paced uh, competition-style workout. Not... Um, super intense, it'd be friendly for everybody, it'd be lots of loading throws, right? Combinations, different things like that. So come out to that, it'd be a lot of judo black belts here. Uh, we have a judo program here at the gym and um, we try and schedule these events to get people brought together, get get some judo ideas flowing and uh, have a good stand-up training session and start uh, yeah, focus on getting into the ground and stuff. So that's something that we talked about in past videos, people like to neglect the, the takedown portion, or like to study judo is only a takedown art, right? It's all jiu-jitsu and grappling to me, so um, that's why we study. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please share this, give us a thumbs up, a like, whatever, uh, <clears throat> whatever it is you do. Uh, help us spread the word, help us get these ideas out. Um, that's that. See ya.